Good morning. Thank you. Thanks very much. So in 10 minutes, I'm going to set some context for the rest of today. 10 minutes on the discount rate is quite challenging, so I'm going to gallop through. Uh, so let me get cracking. The first thing for some context is to understand that in the last 25 years, the personal injury claims market has changed more than it had done in the previous 100 years or so. Um, some radical changes on value. 25 years ago, hard though it is to believe, lawyers were not allowed to advertise. Contingency fees and referral fees were the work of the devil. <laughs> and we can see that the world has changed radically in that period of time. And that's accelerated in the last five years or so with electronic claims portals, whiplash reforms, and more recently, my subject today, discount rate changes. This is all, of course, in the context of a global economic crash, which we are seeing the end of, it's said. It's said that government borrowing will return to the pre-crash levels next year. And for the context of the today, at least, it's interesting to note that the government have recently launched their own savings bond, which guarantees a, a rate of return of 2.2%, and that others in the market are following that lead. So that's some context. Well, here's our eponymous hero, Sir Michael Ogden. Sadly died in, in 2003, age 76, but by that point he had had a stellar legal career. Super bright, super intelligent, high court judge ultimately. He had chaired the Criminal Injuries Compensation Board, but most importantly for today, he had also chaired the, what became known as the Ogden Committee, which published the first set of Ogden tables in 1982. So why do they exist and why are they relevant? Well, we, my starting point is just a quick refresher on the basis of compensation for injuries. The MOJR, re, they remain committed to the principle of 100% compensation. That's to say that somebody who is injured in a road traffic accident should be compensated to the point as close as possible as if they had not been injured or suffered financial losses arising at all. Now, that's an important principle because... The 100% principle means not to be undercompensated, but also it means not to be overcompensated. And that is a challenge. Now, this is where we come into our mischief. The mischief for personal injury claims, particularly the larger ones, which is what we're focusing, I'm focusing on today, is the mischief of over or under compensation. Take a 40-year-old man, for example, who cannot work again, and who is intending to work for another 20 years. It's a very simple example. Uh, he would, under the, certainly in January of this year, be overcompensated if he was simply given 20 years' worth of his net annual earnings. And that's because, at that point, he would have um, been able to invest that money and to receive a rate of return, which would mean he would have done rather better than if he'd continued to work. So he would have been overcompensated in that sense. Well, the solution to ensuring previously that people were not overcompensated was uh, this, the Ogden tables set out in the Facts and Figures book now. Now, this is the legal bit, so I apologise for the slightly boring part here, but it's important for the rest of the talk. Just this one slide, so bear with me. <coughs> so any given claimant, male or female, of any age, is given an actuarial calculation based on their estimated life expectancy. Now, that takes into account broadly life expectancy and, or and mortality rates for the overall compensation, uh, for the overall population. Now, armed with that data, a table can be created with a series of figures for all claimants, regardless of gender or age. That's only half the story, though. We're almost at the end of this slide. In addition, an assumption has to be made as to the rate of return a claimant can achieve if they invest the lump sum. And that rate of return is factored into that calculation. And when you apply both the gender, age element and the um, rate of return, known as the discount rate, you arrive at something called a multiplier. And let me just show you very simply what that means. So, very simple graphic. The multiplicand in personal injury terms is the annual loss. The multiplier is the amount by which it's multiplied to ensure that someone's not overcompensated or undercompensated, and the product is the total amount of damages they receive for that head of claim. Well, let me turn then to the discount rate. This is set by the Lord Chancellor. 
It's under, there's something called a damages act, and the Lord Chancellor has to set it based on, at the moment, one important case, which is called Wells and Wells from 1998, uh, decided by the House of Lords. In a nutshell, the House of Lords decided that when assessing the discount rate that should be applied, it must be assumed that a claimant investing a lump sum will be a claimant, a prudent claimant investor and will only invest in government gilts. It's a very limited range of investment with a quite a low rate of return currently. And that has created a challenge because over the last 10 years, the claimant fraternity, not without merit, have been arguing half percent, which is the discount rate, or so was the current discount rate from 1991, was too high. that They could not achieve that rate of return by investing in gilts. And so it changed in March this year with a month's notice to minus 0.75%. It was, it was the change wasn't, ex wasn't expected. What it was changed to was fantastical in many ways. An extraordinary shift. Well, what does it all mean? Nigel Paul QC tweeted as it came in, the new discount rate, uh, that we may be about to see compensation claims the like of which we have never seen before and the like of which in due course, we may never see again. Well, why is that? Well, the largest claims have become larger. So very quickly, because I know Martin's going to give you some more detail on this as he gets to his section. This is my example to, to illustrate the point. Very simple example. So a compensation claim based on losses into the future for another 20 years of £200,000 per annum. It's a large loss, catastrophic injury claim. Usually it's going to be a care claim. In this case, with a discount rate of 2.5%, that claim is worth £3.1 million. And it changes, it changes to £4.3 million. So do the maths, as they say, it's another million pounds. It doesn't stop there, though, because bearing in mind that was a 20-year example... Forty years, the same claim increases by that much for four million, and if sixty years, it increases by that much. Well, what's waiting? And uh, there's a lot of doom saying going on about what's waiting. It seems to be a lot of people suggesting that um, things are going to change forever, and some people are change, saying it's going to swing back to how it was before. And I think it's worth exploring that. Bear in mind also, some other, just a couple of other quick examples, that a, an infant, a tragically injured child um, who suffers very little life, uh, reduction in life expectancy but who needs care for life, their multiplier will lift from somewhere in the high 30s to somewhere well over 120. So we're seeing significant shifts there. But it also changes for if insignificant context of large loss. So we may have claim, for example, if a 50-year-old uh, requires £10,000 of care for the rest of their life, that care claim will lift now from £250,000 in January to £450,000 in March. So on all claims, we're seeing very significant shifts in damages awards and, of course, reserving. Well, is change coming? It is. Uh, on the first, my first point is this. Is it going to seesaw back? Well, how do I put this? I think we'll see. I'm not sure we'll saw. Um, there'll be some element of shift, and that's bound to happen. There's a consultation on the discount rate currently underway, but the problem we've got is that the general election is going to delay that, uh, although there is a committal, I think, a commitment to carry on doing that process. The real problem for the government is that the Chancellor of the Exchequer is facing enormous changes in damages awards for publicly funded claims through the NHS, through local authority, through the MOD, and it seems right to conclude that there will be some uh, adjustment, probably because the government will find a way around the Wells principle of prudent claimants being assumed to invest in gilt, and they'll look more realistically at the market. I looked this morning that a prudent investor in the market currently is said to be able to recover between 4 and 6% with a balanced portfolio of investments. And one of the best arguments I've heard against having to invest just in gilts 
is that just by investing in one area, you're putting all of your eggs in one basket, and that in itself is risky. Thank you very much. <laughs>